Moving your army quickly, efficiently and effectively is utterly essential if you want to have any hope of winning battles in total war. In this guide we're going to go through all the essential controls that everybody should know, a lot of which is the stuff that the in-game prologue tutorial doesn't tell you. We'll also cover some more advanced controls and the general do's and don'ts of moving your army around the battlefield. So, let us begin. So we'll start off with a bunch of different ways for selecting units. Beginning with how do we select our entire army, something you'll want to do at the start of every battle. So as you probably know, you can drag a box over all your units, that's easy enough. But even easier is Control A. This will select every unit in the army instantly. This is mostly only really useful at the start of a battle for moving your initial army up, because after that you won't really want to grab everything to control. Now I assume as well that you probably know that you select units by simply left clicking them. Easy enough. But what if we want to grab multiple units? Well holding down control while your left mouse button click lets you select as many units as you like while you hold control without deselecting any of the previous ones. You can also do this on the unit cards at the bottom of the UI. Another way to grab multiple troops is to hold down shift and left mouse button click between two points and everything between those two points will be selected. We can do this on the battlefield or on the unit cards as well. Mostly handy if you're trying to select your front line perhaps. Another option is control double left mouse button click. This will select all units of the same type. So you can see it selected all of my Sargard. Can be done on the unit cards or the units themselves but it's only the same type of units with the same exact name. Now more important than any of that is learning to use your drag select boxes with blistering speed in what we'll call a quick drag box. You can see me doing it here, just a quick flick of the wrist with a little hold down of the left mouse button allows you to quickly select one unit, multiple units, lords and heroes and then to quickly issue them orders without having to faff around trying to click on the units because sometimes you might click in the space between models in a unit which means you won't actually click anything and it can just get really awkward or you can try and perfectly aim for the flags and stuff but it's way easier just to quick drag over the units. So try to get into the habit of this, it's what you'll want to use to control the army most of the time. There are some situations though where drag boxes don't really work, so that's where you'll need those other controls. Good to be aware though of all the ways to select your units. As I say, you can click on the units themselves, but there's the risk that you might just end up clicking the ground if the models are spaced out. You can click the flags above the units and also the icons above the flags. So there's all different ways to select your units. If you're not using a drag box, the most reliable is probably the icon above the flag as sometimes the flags can get lost in each other if there's a lot of units in one space, but they can all have their uses. And one last useful button, pan to lord. This will instantly select and go to your lord wherever they are on the battlefield, which is very useful for finding them. So if you're over here looking away and you need to find your lord in a hurry, you can simply hit pan to lord and there they will be. By default, it's bound to the home key, which is kind of useless, so you probably want to move it. I have it on the F key because it's important to be able to find your Lord quickly at all times. Now let's talk about moving units, how to traverse the battlefield. Firstly to the most important one that everyone asks me about, how to move your army in formation. This is really simple, mouse over any unit in the army that you've selected, doesn't matter which one, infantry, cavalry, monster, hold down alt and left mouse button drag and you will be able to move your army in formation the same way you set them up. You then simply release the left mouse button to give the order or you can cancel it by tapping the right mouse button. But make sure you remember this one if you take nothing else away from this video and you only remember one hotkey, make sure it's this one. If you don't use this, you're really gonna struggle to move your army effectively. Now furthermore, what if we want to rotate our army kind of on the spot, maybe to face an enemy army that could be, let's say over there. Well, we do the same thing again. Select our units, hold down Alt, left mouse button drag to move the army in formation. We then press Control and we can rotate on the spot where we've stopped and face whichever direction we like. This is incredibly important for being able to face up and make sure you're square to the enemy army coming at you. If you're kind of at a funny angle, it can make things very difficult for you. So be sure to learn to rotate your army to face the enemy. Of course, Alt, left mouse button drag can be used on smaller parts of your army, even single units and you can move and rotate them in the same way. And just a little pro tip here on how to move your front line up effectively using these controls. So a lot of people when they give orders to the front line they do this, they click one unit, give it an order, click another unit, give it an order, click another unit, give it an order. And that leads to this kind of untidy staggered front line. Now it's not a huge deal if this happens depending on the severity of that diagonal line, but there's a much tidier and effective way to attack with your front line. 
All you're going to do is select your front line and use the Alt left mouse button drag movement order first and then you give your attack orders. This gets your front line moving nice and tidy and all together, allowing for just more efficient movement and better control of the front line situation. Another really useful thing to get in the habit of. Now, if you did the prologue tutorial in Warhammer 3, it will have probably told you that when you want to move a unit, you simply right click where you want it to go. The problem with this is that it'll probably put you facing in the wrong direction most of the time. So what is the proper way to move single or just a couple of units to their destination? Well, this is where right mouse button drag comes into play. Select your unit, move to its destination and hold down right mouse button and drag it out as wide as you can. Another essential habit to get into, to be honest, with the most important point being as wide as you can. Stretch that bugger out as far as it'll go. But why, I hear you cry. Why, Zerk? Why spread them so wide? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, it makes them slightly harder to hit for missiles and more specifically artillery. If an explosive shell were to land in the middle of this unit, it would do way less damage than if they were bunched up in a square. The other risk of not pulling your army as wide as possible is that it will be quite small and thus very easy to flank for the enemy. They won't have as far to go to get behind you. Whereas if you're pulled as wide as possible, the enemy has much further to travel and it generally takes longer to get behind you and thus it's more effort for the enemy. Plus, whoever has the wider army has more chance of enveloping their foe. So for the most part, pull your units wide always. A couple of situations where you may want to turn into a box though is if something is charging at you and you want to stop it charging through your unit. For example, a chariot. Chariots like to keep moving at all times, so they like to charge through units and come out the other side. If you're in a tight box formation like this, it's pretty much impossible for a chariot to go straight through you and thus they'll get stuck and you'll be able to get some damage on them and stop them charging around. If they were to charge into this thinly spread unit, the chariot has no problem going through, coming out the other side and continuing to charge around, being an absolute nuisance. So that's one of the main situations where you may want to turn into a box rather than a wide line. Another possible use of the box formation is with ranged units. If you have them behind your front line as your back line, sometimes you may rotate them or they may turn to shoot somebody at the flanks. And when they turn, they will pretty much go into your front line, which can be risky if your front line was fighting some enemies. The ranged unit might get drawn into that fight if they should touch that enemy unit, which will stop the entire unit from firing and thus they'll be way less effective. So putting them in a square means they can rotate much more safely on the spot. So if you rotate them here or if you were aiming at something and they turned, you see they're nowhere near the front line so they won't be disrupted from firing. Although do remember they're now more at risk from missiles and artillery and probably magic spells as well. So overall the takeaway here, right mouse button drag units as wide as possible probably 90% of the time. Then what we want to do is learn to combine that with the quick drag box like so. Quick drag box, right drag wide. We want this to become an unconscious habit. Quick drag box, right drag wide. Quick drag box, right drag wide. What? Apparently I can't say that more than twice in a row. But you get the idea. Quick drag box, right drag wide. Pretty much all the time when commanding single or just a few units. Now let's move on to some more advanced controls. Starting with some hotkeys related to magic and abilities. So, as you may well know, you can select your spells by simply clicking on them in the bottom right hand corner. But we also have the option of using ALT plus number keys to select our spells and that goes around in a clockwise direction starting from the 12 o'clock. This is a much quicker way to select your spells with your caster. You can also press the number a second time to overcast as well and even a third time to cancel it if you do try to overcast. But overall this is a much more efficient way to use your magic than mousing down to use them. It's pretty easy to use on the keyboard, it's just getting into the habit of using it. And the same can be done with your abilities and shift and number keys. So simply hold down the shift, press the number of the corresponding ability you want to use and blammo, it's used. And again, it's very comfortable to press on the keyboard, it's just remembering to actually do it. That's half the battle, but once you do get into the habit of it, it will make you much more effective using your spells and abilities. Another useful thing to know with magic is that some spells can be more precisely aimed, like breath attacks. A lot of people think you can only aim it in the direction it gives you, but if you hold down the left mouse button where you want to cast it, you will be able to aim it more precisely in any direction you wish. Very useful for making the most of your magical power. Do know you can also cancel this by simply right clicking as well. You can also be more precise with things like area spells, like this direct damage Heart of Winter spell. You'll notice it naturally snaps to units that it's nearby, which sometimes isn't what we want. If you be more precise with spells, you can sometimes get more out of them. 
so if you hold Alt, you can now freely move the spell, which will stop it snapping to the enemy units, allowing you to make the most of the spell's power. Now to some more UI stuff with all the buttons below your units. Guard mode, mostly useful for stopping your missile units running after stuff, fire at will is fairly self-explanatory, and skirmish mode is mostly good for skirmish cav to keep them away from danger. All these can now be bound to keys, which makes them so much easier to use. I've got X bound to guard mode, C to fire at will, and V to skirmish mode. These aren't the default keys, but I recommend using this because all three buttons here are next to each other as they are on the keyboard. So it's really easy to get your fingers into the habit of using them because they all line up the same. As for the other buttons down here, you have the run key, which is sometimes useful if your units happen to be walking and you want them to run, or maybe you want your army or something in your army to slow down, you can press R to make them walk, perhaps so they don't get too far ahead of the rest of your army. As for the other UI buttons, we've got the group button, which we'll look at in a second. Halt with backspace. This can be useful if you accidentally give a wrong order. You can quickly hit backspace to cancel all the orders. Set formation. This is when you select your entire army. It'll put them in a kind of formation, but this button is mostly useless, honestly, so ignore this. The game kind of does this automatically now anyway, provided you have the option on. There's also the withdraw button. This can be useful in campaign. If you've got an important unit that's about to die and you want to try and save them, let's say this Griffon Legion here only had three men left and they're a triple gold chevron unit I don't want to lose. I can hit the withdraw button, which will basically tell them to run to the nearest edge of the map and simply get out of the battle. That way I can ensure they stay alive, provided I win, of course. So that's all the UI buttons, apart from melee mode, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, another potentially useful movement order is to draw your own custom unit paths. Simply hold down shift, you'll notice a change on the cursor, and then hold right mouse button and drag it wherever you want the path to go. Simply then release the buttons and the unit will follow the path you've given it. This can be useful for setting up some simple flank attacks in land battles or for having your units navigate settlements in minor settlement and siege battles. Do be aware though that if you try to draw a phallus and get your units to follow it, they will not appreciate the joke and may just give up the command. So keep your path simple, otherwise your units will get confused and end up in some kind of weird formation like this. There also is another very similar command where you hold shift and instead of drawing the path with right mouse button, you simply click with the right mouse button where you want and it'll kind of create checkpoints that the unit will go to. With both of these commands as well, you can click an attack order at the end if you want to, but honestly, it's pretty buggy and very often goes wrong, so I wouldn't recommend using it with attack orders on the end. So both of these commands can be good for, like I say, setting up some simple flanks, but don't get too complicated. They are a bit buggy and can go wrong, so keep an eye on them. Now to talk about the melee mode button and why it's mostly useless. If you activate this, it will force the unit to fight in melee. Even if they have a missile attack or if they're an artillery or a chariot with missiles, they will go into melee mode. So when melee mode isn't activated and a unit has a missile attack and you click an attack order, they will of course shoot the unit. You can tell this by the crosshair on your cursor. That's pretty normal and what missile units should do, right? But sometimes you want these missile units to go into melee just maybe the once. Well, if you hover over the unit and hold Alt and right click, this will force them to melee attack without you having to mess around with the melee mode button. It's a one-time melee attack order, basically. And when you give them the next order, they will go back to shoot unless you hold alt again. This is especially useful for hybrid units like the Streltsy or missile chariots that often go between missile and melee attacks. You can see I've given an attack order with missiles here, but now I'll hold alt, I'll right click, and now my Streltsy will charge into melee without ever having to use that silly melee mode button. Another command that's useful to know is how to manually aim artillery. Because as you probably know, you simply aim at a unit, right click it, and the artillery will start firing away at it. But maybe you want a more precise bombardment of an area. Well, if you hold down Alt, you can manually aim where your artillery will fire, even if there's nothing there. This can be especially useful if there's a big blob of enemies and you want to try and hit them without injuring your own boys too much, you can more precisely aim where you want the artillery to fire. Now you may notice the sleepy Z's over your units on the unit cards. This doesn't mean they're actually asleep, just that they are idle and have nothing to do, so you probably need to do something with them. You can use the backslash key to quickly find them wherever they are. This is particularly good if you've got routed units that have run off and you've forgotten about them because you haven't seen them. Now you can quickly find them with this key. You can also use control backslash to select all of the sleepy units. So keep an eye on the unit cards. If you see a triple Z there, it doesn't mean your unit's waiting to go to bed. It just means you need to do something with them. And you can quickly find them with backslash. 
Now let's talk about groups, which can be activated by selecting units and pressing G or Control G to put them in a locked group. This is mostly useful for single or maybe small groups of units. Because the army needs to stay versatile at all times, it's rare that you'll want to put big chunks of infantry all grouped up into the same kind of fight. So putting single or couple of units into one group can be useful for ordering them and binding them much quicker. Because all you have to do is press the corresponding number key and you will take control of that unit, whether they're even on your screen or not. Which can lead to some very efficient play if you can get into the habit of using them of course. But do know that you will want to use unlocked groups most of the time. Because locked groups can mess with attack orders, which can be mostly annoying and not that useful. However, locked groups can be very useful at the very start of a battle if you want to move your entire army and keep them all together. You can click the padlock at the top of the group like I just did there. Now when I move my army with alt left mouse button drag, everything will move at the same speed and that is the speed of the slowest unit. So cavalry won't overtake infantry and things like that. This can help you move up much tidier overall. And this is about probably the only main use of a locked group. Because as I mentioned, it messes with attack orders. You see how I just clicked an attack order and all these lines are spread out? The army is gonna move up now in formation and they will automatically attack when they get near enemies. Now this might sound like a good and handy thing, but they auto assign their own targets and it's literally as simple as they will attack the first thing they get close to, which will very often lead to bad matchups. And if you're in an unlocked group, as I've just done here and clicked an attack order, you'll see everything is now going to attack that one unit. They'll forget about formation, they'll forget about staying at the same speed, they just charge in and this is just useless. There's never really use to have your entire army in an unlocked group, only maybe at the start of a battle in a locked group, you can move them all up at the same speed. Otherwise, groups are best used just with one or two, three units maybe, and giving them specific orders. Honestly though, groups aren't that useful unless you maybe want to get into some really high level multiplayer play. I don't really use them that often. You can honestly just get by using the old quick drag box, right drag wide method. And that is about it for all the army controls that I believe are useful. There are some more hotkeys and things, but honestly, anything that's not in this video, I don't think is really that useful. Do understand though that every player is different, so don't feel like you need to use every single hotkey you've seen in this video. Try them all out though, see which ones you like, see which ones you can get yourself into the habit of using. You'll notice many different players playing in many different ways, but the core of what they're doing is probably the same with using quick drag boxes and things like that. Some like to use groups, some like to use keyboard shortcuts, some don't. It is all personal preference. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.